Hello again. Um, okay, this video, this, this, this section of videos is going to be all entirely about something called Box2D. Box2D. <laughs> Let's write that over here. Box2D. Now, why are we talking about Box2D? Okay, so what have we been doing? We have been making all these examples. They have these mover objects. The objects have these vectors. They have these functions. What do they do? They move around the screen. They respond to forces. We've been building our own physics engine, bit by bit, slowly by slowly, looking at different examples and scenarios for simulating uh, physics and motion on the screen. Of course, it's probably quite obvious to you that we are not the first people to have ever thought of this problem and ever done this. And in fact, physics simulation exists everywhere in computer graphics. And there are lots of examples of, of, of ways of writing code and libraries that you can use. So what we want to take a moment in this nature of code experience to say, OK, well, there's value to us building our own physics engine, to learning the ins and outs of it, to kind of being creative with what we're making. But maybe there is a time and place where we should just use somebody else's physics engine, somebody else's physics library to control the behavior and motion of everything on the screen. And so what I want to look at in this video is A, what is, what is the physics library? What, what is Box2D? Where do I get Box2D? And what are the pros and cons of using something like Box2D instead of um, custom baking your own stuff? OK? So uh, this is going to be challenging. I have, I, I have made a list. I've got eight videos to do. It will probably turn into more, honestly. It's a huge topic. And it's not going to be easy. But so this first video, which, you know, which will just be a short, hopefully, I just want to kind of talk through the basic elements of Box2D, look at a couple websites where you can get stuff. I'll include links below wherever you're watching this, on Vimeo or wherever, um, of, of where you want to download the stuff. And then you know, we'll get into the details in, in future videos. So if you kind of already, if you know what Box2D is and you're already up and running, you could stop now and just go to the next video. OK, so um, Box2D, let's think about why? Why is what, is what is the sort of central reason why you might want to use a library like Box2D? OK, so I'm, I'm sure this scenario has come up for you before. You, you, you have all these circles moving around the screen, and you're programming them with vectors and forces, and they're all doing all this exciting stuff. But you want to figure out, you know, you have got this circle and this other circle, and they're moving towards each other. And you know they're going to they're gonna get right next to each other, and you're going to want to detect the fact that they're touching each other and they're bouncing off each other. You want to do something with their collision. If you have a program where the collisions of objects matter to you, if you have this idea for something you want to make, and you're walking down the street describing your idea to your friend, do, 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 blah, 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 collisions, blah, 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 collisions, this and that and this and that and that, and then they collide, and blah, blah, blah. If you're using the word collision over and over again in your project description, this is a moment where probably you want to use Box2D. We could start to go through the math for this. And it's, it, with circles, it's not so bad. We know, first of all, we know how to detect if two circles are intersecting or not, right? We can just look at the distance between those two circles. And if the distance between those two circles is greater than the sum of their radii, then they're not overlapping. If it's less than the sum of their radii, they are overlapping. And then we could start to figure out, OK, well, if, if they are overlapping, what do we do with them? Well, we know their velocity vectors. We could probably do some vector math and reflect their vectors and bounce them and rotate them. And we could figure out what direction they're going to go. And this would be a worthwhile exercise. And somebody someday should make a video about how to do this scenario. But this is the moment. This is the moment in our life where we are choosing not to go down this road. Because this road leads to other more complicated and stressful problems. Like, what if they aren't circles? What if these are strangely shaped polygons? And, and, and what if those strangely shaped polygons should like are spinning? And how do we know if they're overlapping when they hit each other? Should, how are they going to bounce off each other and with friction? And what if they're kind of elastic or not very elastic? There's so many ways we could make this problem so unbelievably complicated. We could suddenly find ourselves dedicating the next several years of our life to figuring out just what to do about things colliding. The good news for us is somebody else already spent many years of their life dedicated to this problem, and they released the solution in an open source library called Box2D. So one of the central reasons why we want to use Box2D is to deal with stuff like collisions in two dimensions. Now, if we're going to get into 3D, that we get, let's not even, we're not even going to get in this, in this about Box2D. We're sticking in two dimensions. You might this is it brings up an interesting point though, which is that. 
Is there ever a, why, why, you could be asking yourself, okay, that's great. Why would I never not use Boxer? I mean, that sounds awesome. I should just use that for everything. And you might choose to now use it for everything. But I, I do want to emphasize that this doesn't come without any, ex, any pain as well, right? Using a library, you've got to learn the, how the library works. You've got to figure out how to import stuff, which functions, which classes. There's a lot of overhead. And as we're going to see, there's a lot of stuff we have to kind of learn how to use just to, just to, you know, just to get a circle moving on the screen with Box2D is a lot more effort than without it. But when we, once we get to the effort of having to deal with collisions, it becomes worth that effort to get Box2D up and running. So it's this kind of balancing act, and, and, and I'm very curious, actually. I don't, I don't pretend to have the answer to this. You, this is a question you will have to wrestle with. I have this idea for this project I want to make. Should I use this library? Should I use this other library? Should I use no library? And this is the question we hope to, as a community, whoever we may be, kind of solve together and talk about and discuss. And, and I would be interested in hearing from you as to you know, what, what's, what's worked with Box2D and what hasn't. So, OK. So this kind of gets us over the hump of why we want to use Box2D. So there's two more questions we need to answer in this particular video. One is, where do I get it, and how can I even be up and running with it? And, and then kind of what is the overview? What's the bigger picture here? What are the central elements that I need to learn about? So let's first take a look at where it is that you get Box2D and what Box2D really is. The, the first thing I should mention, though, um, I'm going to include, this is so like kind of analog of me, but um, here is a website that you could go to, box2d.org. And I'm going to include everything that I'm going to show you, I'm going to include as links below wherever you're watching this, um, you know, probably on Vimeo. Um, in the description, I'll include links. OK, so uh, <laughs> where, what is Box2D? Actually, what I meant to write here, I'm just kind of rambling now, is C++. So one thing we should be aware of is Box2D is a C++ engine. It's written in C++. And if you go to box2d.org, that's where you can download it. You can find the documentation. There's a forum. There's information about the project. Um, it's a C++ engine. It was created by someone named Aaron Cato. I believe it's been around since 2007, something like that. It's probably in many ways most famous for uh, its use in the game Angry Birds and many, 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 many mobile uh, tablet games that you play um, are, are built with a physics engine. And Box2D is a very popular one, especially for 2D games. So one of the things that I think is most useful about this website that you might want to take a look at is perhaps rather dry reading. But if you're, if you're like me and you like to find something to read you know, quietly at night with a flashlight while you're about to go to bed, you might go here and look at the Box2D manual. So the Box2D manual is going to give you an overview of kind of all, all what are all the pieces of Box2D. If you look at this, it's all written for the C++ user. Now, here's the thing. Box2D is such an amazing and incredible library that does so much. Uh, we are not the first people to discover this. It's been ported to just about every language and environment you can think of. There's a JavaScript version. There's a, a Flash version. There's probably, there's, I, I can't even, anything you can imagine, there's probably a version. Now, processing is built, as you, as you may well know, is built on top of Java. So if we could just find a Java version of Box2D, we could probably use it in processing. And in fact, there is one. So if you go to jbox2d.org, you'll find a Java physics engine. This is a port of the Box2D library for Java. Now, you could, we could be done here. We could just say, ah, this is perfect. I found this. I'll download this. I'll figure out. I'll somehow get processing to recognize it and use it. And I'll write all this Java E code. And that's essentially what we're going to do. But to make this a little bit easier, I have put together something called pbox2d, which I realize is sort of against the rules of library making, because the p is sort of reserved for official things. So maybe I should change the name of it. But uh, I don't know why it just, got, just occurred to me now, <laughs> this part out. Uh, but anyway, um, this what this is, is it really isn't, it's, it's misleading. It looks like it's a processing port of box2d. But what it really is is a little. It's, it's really just a little, um, it's a set of examples and a library that allows you to sort of easily a access JBox2D directly from within processing. So that's the details of this. This is what, you know, as I look through my list of videos, there's like eight of them. All of that's going to use this um, library called pbox2D. 
So you can see it's on GitHub. There's a link to download it. I'll include a link below. Um, there's lots and lots of examples. I don't know if I had the time, and maybe I will, I could probably go through all of them. I have hours of content here, but I'm going to try to whittle this down to the basics. Now, I should mention that this is not the only way to use Box2D in processing. In fact, there are other libraries. If you go to the Processing Libraries page, you'll see a few. Um, Box Wrap 2D, I think one is called. But one that I wanted to point out, which I think is particularly wonderful, is called Physica, which is, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I say it with enthusiasm, though, Physica, um, which is by uh, Richard Markser. And this, I think, is terrific. I, I'm not choosing to use it because what I think it's useful for us as an exercise here to really dive into the guts of Box2D. Physica is a little, little bit of a higher level layer. It, in many ways, makes it, do, it makes it a little bit easier to use, but um, perhaps um, not every, I actually don't know if this is accurate, but uh, not everything in the entirety of Box2D has been implemented. So I want us to kind of get into the raw Box2D to really learn about how it works. So, um, but you know, maybe I need to reconsider that because this is really a wonderful library and I definitely recommend you taking a look at it. Okay, so this is the picture of where, where everything is. Now, let's just discuss for a moment, though, um, kind of looking at an overview of all of the elements in Box2D. Uh, you know what? Actually, that's going to be in the next video. <laughs> this, I think this is good. Here's the thing. So this is what you should do. You should go and you should download um, this library, pbox2d, use the link below, download it, open it, get it running, go through all the examples and just run them. Take a look at them and, and sort of just see if it makes sense to you that this is something that you think you might want to use that's going to have, add value to the stuff that you're making. And if that's the case, then continue and watch the next set of videos. If not, you know, go and have a sandwich or a nice salad or something, you know, take, take, a, take, a, take, take, relax and do something else. Okay, so uh, hopefully that gives you kind of a basic overview of what Box2D is and when you want to think about using it. The next video we're going to get into kind of an, another overview but with more details about the elements of Box2D and how they're used. And then finally we'll start digging into the code details as well and see how to actually write code that uses Box2D. Okay, uh, goodbye. <laughs>